Hello and welcome back to a new video here on the Ludwig Fusel channel. I'm back with a new video. I haven't done a video for quite a while, but hey, here I am. Sorry for not doing any videos in a while, but yeah, I am a bit occupied. I'm working full time now and there's a lot of, um, yeah, things that happen aside of, uh, yeah, making YouTube videos. But here I am back for a new video series, a new game engine series. And yes, you maybe are even tired uh, for me saying that, but I have done a few game engine series on this channel already. However, this one has a main new goal. Like every game engine the series that I want to do is I wanted to do it the right way, let's say. The, the way that I have experienced is good, the way, not the way that I have seen that uh, things don't work. Like for example, I've written the production C++ um, uh, application the, at my previous employer where I was uh, doing like uh, my studying with. And um, yeah, I had um, developed an application in a certain way there, which was mm, nice and it worked. But in the end, I was saying like, okay, it has certain drawbacks. And if you want to really build a big system like a game engine, these drawbacks need to be uh, addressed. Basically, I've written like a very plain, very simple application. However, since I do not really have the time uh, in my private time to really uh, engineer a very complicated application, I think you can kind of like see the pattern occurring. Like if you look on, for example, the Hazel project from uh, Cherno, he also needs to um, like split it into two different engines, like one for making videos on with 2D and trying to be simple and one being like complicated, uh, <laughs> being a sophisticated engine. And I would really love to make a sophisticated sophisticated engine and um, yeah, show it really everything on video, but in the end this sadly doesn't work and I don't have the time, the free time for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a simple game engine now. Now that's the first time that I say I want to write a simple game engine. Okay, so let's create a repository. We're going to call the repository game engine. We do not going to start from a template because we're going to write a simple engine. A simple engine that only runs for now on Windows, but is not convoluted so that we cannot get away from Windows. So we're going to write a simple engine and this is like the main reason behind that simple we want to make it simple we don't want to have anything that's complicated related to um the system but i want to have it kind of modular still so yeah we're not gonna make it too stupid but we're gonna make it quite stupid okay so description yeah i can leave this empty for now we want to have a readme file and i want to have the mit license in here and then let's start and create the project so this is our um code here now let me actually copy that and clone that i've already opened up my folder so let's open up the cmd go to git clone and paste it in here so the game engine that we're going to do is going to start with 2d only maybe in the future we're going to go into a 3d game engine but the first things that we want to solve is a very very simple two dimensional game engine and if you then want to go 3d sure we're going to make it and port it to being 3d but we're going to start 2D. We're also not going to write a whole editor and things like that. We're going to write a quite a nice editor. We're going to use IMGUI and we're going to make tools that allow us to work with the, um, the game. But it's going to be a bit different. You're going to see in the end how it is. It will basically be an editor embedded into the game. If you are on a development configuration, we're going to, of course, also implement like resource uh, pre-processing and resource packing. This is all going to be implemented, but this is going to be like open up the engine in development uh, and then uh, issue the build step from within the development engine. And then you're going to get like a, a package. So we're going to try to make it really, really, really simple. I try to not use any uh, third party libraries. We're not going to be able to do it so at some point we're going to need third-party libraries for example for image loading uh, we might use scbi so or stb image which is a simple library for using images um, we might also if we're going to go into font rendering need to use free type and things like that but i try to make it as less complicated as possible and yeah let's directly start in and create a visual studio solution so i've already opened visual studio i've created a new project then i go to blank solution uh, the blank solution i've already prepared that it should be in here currently it's called solution i want to call this game engine okay create and here we are and the first thing that i want to do is directly quit out of visual studio because you can see it created a subfolder basically what i want to do is i want to take this one out remove 
it and boom now i have the structure that i want game engine license and readme file so let's open up the game engine solution now again now we are in the right structure now what i want to do is i want to add a few uh, folders in here uh dependencies this is going to be a folder where we're going to add libraries if we need them then i want to have my uh, actual engine so the engine goes in here we're going to try to keep this quite uh, minimalistic we're going to have uh, yeah, maybe let's say one. I will try to keep it at one um, Visual Studio project, but I think we're actually not going to have it as one Visual Studio project. We're going to have it as two. We're going to have one as the engine core and the engine Windows core. So I want to try to separate it a bit already so that we have like it decoupled from the actual implementations just to show you a bit how you could tackle writing a simple engine. And at some point I want to port the engine to Linux as well. So yeah, so for that I want to kind of like make this already separated. We might need to do yeah more hassle later on to separate it more but for now this should be good and now let's uh, create an extra project so i'm gonna add a new project in here so i'm gonna add an empty project now we need to decide where to put it we have this game engine folder i actually want to have a folder called source where all of our source code goes in and then inside of the source folder i can create a project and i'm calling this one engine core because this is going to be the core of the engine Okay, pressing enter, and there we are, the engine core is installed in here. Okay, so now I want to add a new project here, and this is again an empty project. It's going to go into a uh, game engine, I think, sure, engine source, okay. Uh, and we're going to call this one engine windows. So it's the windows uh, implementation of it. So we have core and windows. Now what I want to do in here now is I want to add a new project at the root level of our solution and I'm going to call this one uh, empty game. Okay, no, next. Okay, we are going to be in here. This is the source directory. We had uh, already engine in here. Okay, so let this again. Empty game. So empty game is going to be our playground. It's not going to be 100% empty, but this empty game shall be our kind of like starting template for writing games. Okay, so just that we have all the files. I'm going to add a main.cpp to the empty game. Then I am going to make the empty game as a uh, startup project in the engine core. Just that we have this uh, settings dummy cpp we can copy this over as well so that we have just two dummy cpp files in there that's important so that visual studio can detect that we're actually having c plus plus projects all right so now let's get started and go to properties i'm going to go to the configuration manager and i'm going to adjust the configurations now first of all x68 we don't need that i don't want that here then win32 we don't need this as well we are not going to implement any 32-bit support 32-bit i'm not sure 32-bit is a thing that at least that at gaming it's that okay so now we can see that we have a debug and a release configuration i want to have a new configuration called develop so for developing the game i'm going to copy develop from release because it's going to be a release configuration and there we go we now have these configurations here so release x64 yeah that's a bit bugged in visual studio debug develop and release these are the th configurations that i want to have now the next thing that i want to adjust is the uh, properties here so first of all let's make this cpp20 because why would we not use cpp20 let's do this for all oops let's do this for all projects in here and now let's also set up the engine windows it's not going to be an uh, exe it's going to be a no not a dynamic library i want to have it as a static library and I want to have another static library for the engine core. Okay, so now we have the very basic setup. Now I want to adjust these paths here. So the output directory, I don't like that one. Uh, actually, it's going to go into a build directory and then it's going to be in a binary directory and then it's platform minus configuration. That's how I like to do it. Um, we can directly apply this to all of them. That's a bit of a problem if you're trying to make something simple and just with Visual Studio, it's always going to be a bit of a pain setting this up. I think there is a way of doing like these property sheets and Visual Studio, uh, MS Build, Build Magics, but um, at some point we might, uh, as soon as we get, uh, as soon as we want to go to Linux, we do need to change our build pipeline anyways. So for now it's fine, but we will change it later. Okay, so I will also um, 
um, need to set up my uh, intermediate directory. I'm just going to put it into obj directory and the project name behind it. So this is going to be applied for all of the projects. And again, if you're new to Visual Studio, you need to make sure that all configurations is always applied. If this is not set, you're going to yeah, have problems later on. Okay, so the next thing that I want to maybe change is uh, C++ preprocessor. I want to uh, have some preprocessor definitions. You can see that there are different options, which I really hate. But I think we should be still able to do that. You can, if you want to see how uh, it works, you can click on this macro button, which is currently screwing me up a lot. But if you can see here, you can find macros that you can use. And I want to have the... Uh, configuration that I have, like this configuration name. I think there is a way to make this uh, capitalized, but I am not really sure. Um, so Studio capitalize um, macro convert text to uppercase and lowercase. No. I don't want to have that. There was a, I think there was a way to do that in Visual Studio. Hmm. Um. But maybe I, let's just say at conf underscore debug. I'm not really, I think that this is a problem for now that it's not capitalized. It's a bit against, um, against the, the, the norm, but yeah. Let's put this also everywhere. And if you are now going to debug, you should see that this should all carry through. Yeah. Okay, so now I just have the configuration. We're gonna uh, need a configuration that's really, really important. And what I also wanna do is, I should have done this before I've copied it around, is um, I wanna have always uh, Windows defined. That should be always is defined as well. So let's apply this again at all configurations and let's push this through. So just that we know that we are on Windows. Again, what I am doing here, it's not really something that I would recommend doing like this if you want to really do a production ready project, but for a small and simple project, this is totally fine. If you just want to start out and you don't want to fiddle around with other build tools, then you can do everything of that within Visual Studio. Okay, now, um, there are a few other things that you could change for especially a game, uh, but I don't really want to bother with that now. The only thing that I want to bother is to actually reference these two projects. So empty game is, I'm going to add a reference in here and I'm going to reference engine core and engine windows. Then what we need to do is we need to include our, um, our include directories. So in VCC directories, you have the include directories. And I want to add a new one. It's uh, going to be a uh, solution dear. It's a solution directory. And then we have our source directory. And inside of the source directory, we have all of our engine uh, related things. So what I want to do is I want to copy this also over so that the include directory is also fixed. And then what we should do in theory is we should now be able to use the engine. So for example, if I would have an engine core, if I would there have a engine.h in here, uh, then I should be able now to, uh, maybe let's lay, let's add some, some implementation. Let's quickly do this in the dummy. Yeah, of course, this is not going to see it. If I have a const char, char pointer get msg to get a message in here, I could uh, go into my dummy and define an implementation for that and return hello world. And what I then can do inside of main is I can hashtag include my uh, engine core engine.h. And I, I can include uh, IO stream and then I can write my end main. And what I can do is I can do my uh, std c out and I can see out my get message. And if I now run that code, it should build both of my Windows and core project. And at some point as it's finished, uh, it should give me a hello world, which exactly worked as thought. 
but I want to go of course the debug configuration should work for debug as well uh, there's no real difference between that hello world it's gonna be displayed anyways okay so that's everything that we need for today we have set it up the project for today no there's actually something that I need I need to go into my um, game engine project I like to do all my git stuff with uh, VS code and what we need is important git ignore that's a really really important file the first thing is visual studio visual studio things need to be excluded in this case it's not the project itself but it's the .vs folder which visual studio uses like like as a cache and things like that there's a lot of stuff in here that we don't need and also what we of course also don't need is the build output so everything that was being put in the build directory we don't need it because these are just like binary exe files and things like that they can be recompiled uh, and should not be on git so just these files the solution the git ignore itself of course and everything that we have in source including the project if you would have a proper um proper build system this visual studio things uh, would be excluded as well but that's everything that we need so yeah setup of project that's what we have we can commit that and we can sync the changes and yeah there we go everything has been synced to get now and we are ready to continue in the next video so thank you for watching make sure you like and subscribe and see you in the next one bye